What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Blue Blood Sports TV, back at y'all with another one. So, undefeated two-division world champion, currently the WBC reigning middleweight world champion, superstar boxer, Jamal Lyons only Charlo. He got a de he defeated, he got a unanimous decision victory over uh, Juan Montiel this past weekend. But it turned out to be a harder-fought fight than most people expected. Most people expected Jamal Charlo to go into this fight and absolutely dominate Juan Macias Montiel and knock him out. It looked that way in the first half of the fight, like that was indeed going to be the case. But in the second half of the fight, it turned out to be anything but that. It saw Juan Montiel in the 8th and ninth round hurt Jamal Charlo and stun Jamal Charlo badly, uh, closing Jamal Charlo's right eye. You know, uh, Jamal Charles' body language uh, wasn't the most confident. But he did suffer what looks to be maybe a fractured right hand, a broken right hand. And early in the fight, as I stated, it looked like Jamal Charlo was going to get the stoppage victory. Jamal Charlo, 32, 32 wins, no losses, no draws. 22 wins by way of knockout. He's 31 years of age, stands at 6 feet tall with a 73 and a half inch arm reach. And like I said, this past Saturday night, he took on defeated. Juan Monteo, okay? Juan Monteo, 22 wins, 4 losses, 2 draws. He was knocked out in this fight uh, in prior fights. So, you know, uh, he's unorthodox. Doesn't have great defense. So you expect Jamal Charlo, a guy at the level of Jamal Charlo, to go in there and walk through uh, Monteo, okay? But like I said, in the second half of the fight, he started to come on. And he started to land left hooks to the body, uppercuts, straight right hands on Jamal Charlo shocking okay so with that said nonetheless jamal charlo he got the unanimous decision victory over uh montiel uh with that said everybody in the sport of boxing is instant gratification okay we always want to see what's next okay we're never satisfied with what's in front of us we always want to see what's next with that said he got the victory over montiel and now everybody wants to know what was next uh he stated that he's not 168 pounder so he stated that he's not interested in going up to 168 to challenge four division world champion Mexican superstar boxer who's the unified super middleweight world champion Saul Canelo Alvarez or undefeated two-time WBC super middleweight world champion Mexican superstar boxer David Benavidez for that matter okay he says he's staying at 160 so to stay at 160 means that uh, we want to see Jamal Charlo against the absolute best they have to offer at 160 and the world champions and the undefeated two division world champion who currently is the WBO reigning middleweight world champion superstar boxer Demetrius Bubu Andre 30 wins no losses no draws 18 wins by way of knockout he's 33 years of age he stands at six foot tall with a 73 inch armage last time we saw him in the ring was April of this year when he took on Liam Williams uh, and he got a unanimous decision victory he hurt Liam Williams bad a few times but in this fight, Liam Williams hurt him bad, especially in the third round, okay? So he looked vulnerable. But nonetheless, this is the fight we want to see, seeing as though uh, two times uh, middleweight world champion who currently is the IBF middleweight reigning world champion, Gennady Triple G Golovkin, and the WBA reigning middleweight world champion, Murata, they're on a collision course at December 31st. They already have a date scheduled, and they're already going to, they're planning to do a, a card in which we'll see them uh, face off against other opponents on the same card to build up their future showdown in December. So they're off the table. That leaves Demetrius Andre for Jamal Charlo. Now, we know the history of Jam Jam uh, the Charlos with Jamal Charlo's identical twin brother, who's a two-time junior middleweight world champion going into an undisputed match July 17th, and Jamel Lyons only Charlo. He was signed on to fight Demetrius Andre five years ago. The fight fell through as Demetrius Andre, the week of the fight, pulled out of the fight, uh, citing more money. And Jamel, that left Jamel Charlo to scramble for an opponent. And that left Jamel Charlo to have to uh, take a pay cut as well. But that said, since then, they've been reluctant to make the fight with Demetrius Andre. But now at this point in time, there's no other direction for Jamal Charlo. Uh, there's nobody left for him to fight any big names. They're just not available. So, Jamal Charlo, initially he stated, uh, Demetrius Andre, yeah, let's make that fight happen. I want him. Let's go after him. 
Now he's since changed his tune, and he's saying that Demetrius Andre needs to face off against Montiel, beat Montiel, and then we can start to talk. In the same token, he's saying he's not a matchmaker, he's not a promoter, and he doesn't make these fights happen. So Demetrius Andre, he uh, responded to Jamal Charlo on social media, and he says, now Jamal Charlo is starting to look uh, silly with the comments he's making. You're saying you're not a matchmaker, but instead you're telling me that I need to go fight Montiel. Uh, you're giving directions to everybody, told Canelo Alvarez to come down to 160. He says, uh, why don't we just go ahead and unify and make this big fight happen? It's a big fight for both guys. Jamal Charles is 31, Demetrius Andre is 33. Uh, Tom is not on their side. This would be a huge unification bout. It would be a, a mega fight. It's pay-per-view worthy. They're not the biggest stars in the sport of boxing, but the hardcore boxing fans and the casual boxing fans, there's enough that could carry a pay-per-view card for a fight of this magnitude. It's a unification bout. It would be the biggest fight in both fighters' careers. They both look vulnerable in their last fights. It would be, you know, enormous for both guys. Demetrius Andre, he says, let's make it happen in September. Let's not wait. He says, let's unify the belts. Okay? Uh, and I agree with Demetrius Andre. There's no reason at this point in this gesture in Jamal Charles' career that he should be directing Demetrius Andre to face Montiel. Uh, Montiel is not a world beater. He showed a lot of heart and a lot of grit against Jamal Charlo. Uh, it was a, a huge opportunity, life-changing opportunity, and he gave it all he had in the fight. Um, but he's not a world beater. It's not a mega fight. He's not much better than Liam Williams, if at all. If he's better than Liam Williams, most people would say Liam Williams is a better fighter than Montiel. So uh, neither guy, Andre or Jamal Charlo, have had a big lucrative fight against a uh, you know high-profile opponent that would be a legacy-defining fight. Neither guy. So Demetrius Andre, he's saying let's make it happen. Now I understand the hesitation on the part of Jamal Charlo seeing as though Demetrius Andre, the week of the fight, uh, that's hard to trust, right? The week of the fight, you pull out the fight and you cost uh, money and you cited that you could get more money. Well, is there ever a number that he would be satisfied with to actually follow through with the fight? I'm sure on the part of J the Charlos, that has to be in their mind, okay? As much as us as the boxing fans and boxing media and the pundits, we don't want to hear it. You know, it has to be business-wise in their mind, okay? We got you all the way to the finish line and you just decided not to cross it and you decided to make an about face and choose a different route to cross the finish line. That's a tough uh, business move, okay? So with that said, you know, I understand the hesitation on their part. You know, it uh, costs Jamel millions of dollars, okay? Uh, so, but I'm sure this gesture in Demetrius Andre's career, you know, uh, him being with Matchroom, Matchroom CEO and promoter Eddie Hearn, uh, being on the zone, you know, making money, I don't see him actually you know, pulling out this fight, okay, I think that he would, at this, at this point in his career, he was going to look to make a statement, and what better way to make a statement against Jamal Charlo, uh, I don't understand the fact that Jamal Charlo is saying that he's not a matchmaker, uh, saying that, you know, he's not a promoter, he's not a manager, all he does is fight, well, at some point in time, you have to take the reins of your career into your own hands, okay, uh, and you, you're 30 over the wrong side of 30, it's time to start making the biggest fights possible for yourself, uh, fighting the Mon, uh, Monteos and, uh, uh, you know, the Carl Balls and uh, um, these level of opponents is not going to get it done, okay? It's just not. The fans are not going to continue to support it. At some point in time, now, they got the fan support because they ended up having a fight in Houston in his hometown in his backyard. But if this fight was in Brooklyn or if this fight was in Las Vegas, it would never be a profitable fight because... We want to see Jamal Charlo in the biggest fights possible. You don't want to see him in fights that are supposed to be mismatches that turn out to be slugfest. You know, uh, nobody expected it to be what it turned out to be. Everybody expected it to be a walk in the park. Now, no boxing matches are walk in the park. But let's, let's face it, okay? There's levels in the sport of boxing for a reason. Just like there's weight classes for a reason, okay? Uh, it's up to the fighters themselves to, you know, uh, carry out you know, um, what's in front of them, you know, um, actually follow through. But for the most part, too much too much talent for Jamal Charlo to be in a competitive fight with Montiel, okay? Uh, it's understandable be him being in a competitive fight with Gennady Golovkin, Canelo, or Demetrius Andre, okay? 
But to be in competitive fights with Montiel, that don't cut it. And for Demetrius Andre to be in competitive fights with Liam Williams, that doesn't cut it either. So they need to be facing off against one another. Give the fans the best fight and the best. When we have situations where people are saying Jake Paul and Logan Paul and Floyd Mayweather are coming back out of retirement at 44 to have the, uh, exhibitions against YouTubers is hurting the sport of boxing? No. This is hurting the sport of boxing. Talk like this. Saying you're not a promoter. Saying you're not a manager. All you do is fight. No. At some point in time, you have to take control of your own career. Okay? You have to take the reins and you have to direct your career. And you have to... Uh, put your foot down, stand on your square, and demer demand certain fights. And this is a fight that needs to be demanded on the part of Jamal Charlo, who is definitely going to be the A-side, because uh, they're not the biggest superstars in the sport of boxing, but they're definitely a name in the sport of boxing, and a bigger name in the sport of boxing than Demetrius Andre. So let's see how this unfolds and plays out. But Jamal Charlo, he directs Demetrius Andre in the direction of Montiel, say if he could get past Montiel, then we could get to talking. No. You need to go ahead and negotiate with Demetrius Andre and give the fans the biggest fights possible because they will stop supporting you. But uh, let's see how this unfolds and plays out. Make sure you hit the like button. Drop a comment in the comment section. Let me know what y'all think. Y'all already know what it is. It's your boy Blue. Blue by Sports TV. Hate, like, comment, and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Hit the bell icon to get all the new notifications. Follow me on Instagram at Blue Sports TV, all one word. Y'all already know what it is. Shout out to the entire LDBC. Shout out to New Media. Shout out to Black Media Raw. Make sure you like and share the videos. That's all I got for y'all. Peace. Alicia Bumgarner, you're watching Blue Bud Sports TV.